By the seventh day of our first fostering, things had pretty much gotten into a routine, at least as far as we were doing. But the kittens, their routine consisted mostly of eating, pooping, sleeping, running around like crazy people, eating, pooping, sleeping, and running around all day and all night. But they seem to be doing really well at our house. This is the little lady, Venus. She was a lot more laid back than the others. By the seventh day, Truffle had discovered the other side of the room and my keyboard. He also discovered a cardboard box and a bunch of other places. But they were having a good time. We made sure we provided plenty of toys and plenty of places for them to be when they did want to be by themselves, which wasn't all that often, except for when they started to sleep separately. And it's very noticeable the time periods where they all had to sleep together and then when they started feeling so safe and comfortable that they would go off on their own and find other places to sleep, either on top of a chair, on the couch, underneath something. But that made us feel pretty good. One of the other things we learned, and especially when we had any questions, we could either ask the MSPCA or we would just Google. It's one of the few things that Google is actually good for. And one of the things that we were wondering about was the kittens biting. And we see a lot of videos, especially on Facebook, that has cats biting people's hands or fingers. And according to what we found out, that's not really a great idea. So when you're going to foster, if you foster one kitten, you have to at least foster a second kitten. Because if they never find out how much biting can hurt or just be damn annoying, they're going to keep doing it up until being an adult and then they start causing damage. There were a couple of times when the kittens would be biting and pounding on each other and one of them would give out a little squeak that she had gotten bitten too hard. But that's how they learn that biting hurts. They each found their special favorite toys. And then, of course, like this, it was mine, mine, mine. You can't have it. We provided them with as much scratching surfaces as we could to keep them from scratching the furniture 
or using their claws to scratch the upholstery. And for the most part, it worked. They got really good, really quick at getting up on top of things, jumping up, jumping down. So all those little places that Socks, the mama cat, had as her sanctuary went away. Also, as they were using the couches, we found we couldn't use them. Well, I suppose we could have, but you kind of don't disturb a playing kitty. Or a sleeping one, for that matter. Again, $200 worth of toys, and they're playing with the boxes that they came in. They like to go and rock inside another trash can. One of the things you better get used to is it's not a neat situation. Your place gets pretty upheavaled between covers and plastics and toys and everything else. About the only thing you can say is most of these toys are pretty soft. So it's not like stepping on some kind of a Lego. But they started to climb just about anything they could. And then one night, the night of the 11th, Truffle discovers the outside. And now Socks lost most of her hiding places where she could be alone. The last place that she had was the window behind my printer. They hadn't quite yet made it to that side. They would, but they hadn't at least at that time Ah, which toy to play with? So many choices. One of the things we did find extremely useful when we were trying to get their attention away from something like one of the kittens trying to use the litter box was one of those little laser pointer fish things where they like to chase it around. So if you get their attention with that, it kind of draws them away without you having to actually pick them up and put them somewhere to make it seem like they're doing something wrong. This way, it actually just changes their focus since they have about a two second attention span.
This is Calzini. He's doing all that math in his head to try to figure out if he can make the jump. And he can, except that he kind of forgot about the sliding factor. He was lucky he didn't go over the other edge. Even though we had set both of these up for them to sleep in, they never really did. As nighttime was falling, they became more active. These kittens got vampire hours. Ben doesn't quite have the scratching my neck function down. Ah, to jump or not to jump? Hmm. Good night, day seven.